All right, so here we are. I'm Dave. This is Corey, and we're here with Eric Powell. Now, you are um, – Obviously, everybody knows you from the Goon comic book. But I think the cool thing is, like, we do a podcast where we focus kind of on people from this area. You are a local guy as well. Yeah. Like, you tell everybody, like, where you're from, and are you from Nashville itself? Or well, from- I grew up uh, in the Lebanon and Mount Juliet area, okay. which is just outside of Nashville. Yeah. And I live in Nashville now. Okay. So let's talk about now. When I was a kid, I loved comic books, like, mm-hmm. I mean, with a passion. But um, I realized in maybe the third or fourth grade, I could not draw very well or cut very well. So I realized I was kind of out of luck. When did you know, like, you had some kind of talent? I had to imagine this developed when you were younger, right? Uh, yeah, I, I don't remember a time in my life where I wasn't drawing. It was just what I did. You know, it was just I, I drew. Yeah. And uh, uh, it wasn't until I was in junior high that I, I really thought, like, wow, comics – that's what I should be doing, you know, uh, because I was filling up notepads with like drawings and then I would write stories to go along with the drawings. And then, you know, I kind of got back into comics when I was in junior high and, uh, it just seemed like the perfect thing. It's like, this is exactly what I want to do. Tell stories with drawings, you know? So, uh, it was never, I was, all, I was the kid in school that could draw. You know, okay, you got yeah, one of those yes, kids like, yes. that kid's the jerk. That kid can play football. <laughs> that yeah. one does weird stuff in the bathroom, and that kid can draw. So that was who I was, yeah. That, I do remember that kid. I would always kind of sit next to him and say, can you draw me? And he'd draw yeah. me. I was like, hey, can you draw me again? Because I don't really don't like that. But, yeah. Um, but, yeah, so that's definitely cool. So what were you, when you got back into comics, what, what were you into, like, uh, when I was a young kid, it was the standard stuff that you could find at a spinner rack at the grocery store, you know. It was Spider-Man, the Hulk, Superman, that kind of stuff. And then uh, when I rediscovered comics as a teenager, it was the darker stuff. It was Bernie Wrightson and, um, you know, kind of the grittier comics that were being done at the time. And, uh, yeah, so I kind of also from Bernie Wrights and kind of backtracked and looked at his influences too. You know, I read an interview or something that he did and he's talking about the EC guys and I started getting into their stuff, Wally Wood and Jack Davis and Frank Frazetta and all those guys. So that was the stuff that I, you know, would, when I was collecting, I would go to conventions and, you know, the comic local one or two comic shops we had and dig through, the boxes and yeah. usually find beat up quarter copies of something. Mm-hmm. So what did your parents think about all this while this is happening? Are they supporting you during this time or uh, kind of? <laughs> <laughs> they were pretty supportive in general, but I don't think they understood it. I mean, my, I come from, you know, typical Southern family. So my mom was always very confused about the stuff I was into. And so was my dad. He was just like, uh, you going to, you know, play some football this year. And I was like, <laughs> <laughs> you gotta get out of the house, play some football. What are you doing? You know, and uh, so I know my dad just he he's not the kind of guy who is like into science fiction or comic books or anything like that. So I know he was just kind of like, I don't get any of this crap that you like. And uh, my mom was just more like concerned, like my son's gonna become a psycho killer because look at this, <laughs> like <laughs> look at this stuff he's putting all over his bedroom. So yeah. Um, I remember one time my mom, like I had gotten a Fangoria magazine or something and put a pin up from it in my room. And she was like, your brain is like a computer. All this stuff, you're putting it in there. You know, you're going (laughs) to whatever. So she like sat me down and just like, I just want you to draw the coffee table. Just draw, draw something nice. Draw the So I drew like this face, like coming out of the top of the coffee table, like this demonic head. And she had given up at that point. She's like, yeah. So then when do you start really, I mean, because a lot of kids, if you told them they could be comic artist, comic creator, you know, you tell a kid a lot of things. I think when you get to high school, you start to realize maybe that's not true. Did you ever have a moment where you didn't think you were going to make it in that field? I had a lot of those moments. Yeah. <laughs> it was it was tough. Just like getting into any entertainment business, uh, there's more people that want to do it than there are openings to do that, you know? So... Um, I had a whole a filing cabinet, a drawer in a filing cabinet that I just kept rejection letters in. And uh, 
yeah, it was, uh, there was lots of those moments. And I, I also went to, uh, uh, there was the first con, what you would call a convention I ever went to was a very small thing. And there was, a a guy there who was doing some inking work for DC and it was the first comic book professional I ever met. And I went up to him and I showed him some of the stuff I was doing. And admittedly it was horrible because it was very early on. But I was like, do you think I ever have a chance to work in comics? And he was like, no, Oh my that God. was, that was the only thing he said to me. No. Do you remember this guy today? I, yeah, I know who it is. I'm not okay. going to say who okay, it is. Still, but. Wow. <laughs> you should have sent him like your first thing. Then, in the mail, like, <laughs> That's wild. Like, uh, uh, I mean, so I guess now definitely when you interact with fans, I'm sure that plays in the back of your mind. Like, well, I mean, I try to be polite to everyone who comes up to the table because, I mean, I'm I'm the type of person that doesn't forget. It's like, you made my house payment for me. You know, if they're if they're not buying the books, then I'm not paying my bills. You exactly. know, and uh, so I always try to be very polite to everyone. But sometimes you get pushy people and. You know, it's, you know, sometimes there's got to be, you know, in, in every crowd of, a, you know, a thousand awesomely nice people, there's got to be that one jerk, you know, that and you'll run into them anywhere. So, yeah, but I try to keep in mind that, you know, yeah, these are the people who are supporting me. So exactly. Now, let's talk about the goon a little bit, because this is a very unique character, especially if you see any you know, people have seen him or you can go Google search him right now. But very uniquely designed superhero where he's got you know, the hat, the old school hat, looks like an old school kind of guy. Is there anyone that was the inspiration for that character or was that something you just worked in over time? No, I <clears throat> the build of him was definitely influenced by cartoons. Um just the kind of like knuckle dragger kind of like short legs long arms kind of like if you look at like bugs bunny cartoons and there's always some monster or some guy and they're trying to depict as you know a thug or a brute or something that was the long torso short legs long arms and uh so that was really the um the idea of it you know that they kind of like look of him and then you know i wanted to do something that was kind of like crime noir and everything so his look just kind of evolved from that and uh yeah but there wasn't a, a specific like thing that was like you know influence an actor from a movie or anything like that yeah uh, so just kind of your own creation yeah. so i mean i haven't read everything of the goon now you know there's some characters that cross over batman versus the predator or anything mm -hmm. like that has there been any big crossover things like that that you've been approached to do at this uh, point there there have been a couple of times when it's like let's do a crossover or something they the um i think we've done i think we've done three we'd had a hellboy crossover and we did a uh, crossover with uh the cartoon network show metalocalypse it was death clock versus the goon and then um there was a crossover i didn't work on i just did a cover it was more of like a goon appeared in that book but there was a goon criminal macabre which is another book from dark horse okay. um and those have been the only ones i think still hellboy that's pretty awesome yeah. i mean and you were, were you drawing hellboy in that that issue or was that another artist drawing the uh, goon well, it had a little bookend segment that yeah. was drawn by mignola okay so wow. uh he did the beginning and the end of the book and i did the middle wow so what i mean what I mean, were you a fan? Oh yeah, I'm a big yeah. fan of his. I was, so what was that like? Like, I mean, I mean it must it have been. It was pretty a, awesome. Yeah. It was it was issue seven, so it was pretty early on at Dark Horse. So um, yeah, it was great. There was a lot of cool stuff happening in that time that it was just like, wow, this is this is awesome. Yeah. You know, there, oh, there, yeah. Um, Randy Bowen. I was a big fan of Randy Bowen, who does has a statue company, Bowen Designs. Okay, yeah. They do a lot of Marvel stuff and. Um, he ended up doing a statue. So that was really cool. And then we were doing this crossover and stuff and everything. So it just seemed like I was finally getting there, you know, like all this yeah. cool stuff was happening all at once. So, so uh, is there going to be, I mean, I had the list clear, even real is going to be in a movie of the game yeah. ever. I mean, have you been approached about that? Have you ever thought about that? Yeah, actually we, um, uh, it got optioned a, about five years ago now okay. uh, by uh, David Fincher and an animation company uh, called Blur. And uh, we've been working on that for a while now. Uh, Blur has done a bunch of test stuff and it looks amazing. Um, and uh, we've, 
we showed some stuff off at San Diego Comic Con a couple years ago, and uh, it got a great reaction. So the fans were all aware of it and where we were doing this. But when Fincher and and Blur and Dark Horse Entertainment went around to sh to shop it and try to get a studio behind it, um, they were like, "Wow, that looks amazing!" But we're we don't know what to do with this. You know, it's like. It's a PG-13 animated thing, so it's not aimed towards kids, so no one's really done anything, yeah. you know, specifically like the goon like that. I mean, the closest thing, and this is how Hollywood works, the, they'll try to compare it to something and see how that thing did. Mm -hmm. So they're going like, well, the only thing that's come out that's been animated and not, P, not a G-rated thing has been uh, Beowulf. And and that didn't do so well. So you're comparing yeah. you're comparing the goon to Beowulf. Yeah. It's two two completely different <laughs> things. Um. So there was a you know it it wasn't progressing as fast as we had hoped. So the the fans who were aware of it because we had showed off this footage uh, started doing telling us you know like I was getting email over you know. Twitter and Facebook and all that stuff, just, hey, do a Kickstarter and get crowdfunding behind it. And that was great, and I, I appreciate the enthusiasm, but realistically, you're not going to raise $30 million over Kickstarter. So um, Jeff Fowler, one of the guys at Blur, though, had a great idea. He's like, why don't we kickstart something that we can realistically fund? Like, why don't we do a story reel of the whole movie, which is basically they storyboard the whole film put a temp soundtrack to it and like crudely animate it. So that way you're not ask, asking some executive to read a script. You just give them a DVD and go, here's what our movie is going to be, but it's going to look way better and have a awesome soundtrack and everything to it. Um, so we did that and we raised almost half a million dollars for that. Uh, so they're working on, on it right now. It should be done relatively soon. And then we got to go through the whole pitch process again, but we have a lot more ammunition now that we've, done the Kickstarter and it was so well received and we've got a lot of buzz from it. So, I mean, that's amazing, especially testimony to your fans that you're able to raise that much money. I mean, that is yeah, fantastic. Yeah, we've got a pretty hardcore fan base. Yeah. It's pretty great. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, what's what are some difficult things about your job as far as like that, as you're explaining right there? I mean, that sounds like yeah. it'd be pretty uh, frustrating. Is there other it's, aspects of it that are... It's stressful to... I, there's a level of expectation um that i put on myself you know to um I, I write it and draw it so it's a lot of pressure you know it's like having trying to maintain and you want to do something good and i'm I'm a pretty fast artist but when it comes to the writing i kind of have to bang my head against the wall a little bit because if you don't have the idea or you, the idea you have just isn't there yet you have to wait for it to happen you can't you know um you can work on it as much as you you know you can but it comes to a point where you're just searching for that one bit to to make the whole thing click and you gotta you know you gotta find it yeah. and uh sometimes it takes a little bit longer than you'd like especially on a consistent basis like yeah. as an artist you know it sometimes it can be rough when you think of the goon and you think of a movie if it was going to be live action movie is there any actor that just stands out have you ever thought about that well we've got um we've got attached to the animated movie um uh clancy brown is doing the voice of the goon okay and now i kind of see him like if there was going to be a live action goon movie i almost see him as the you know yeah. he's, he's he's pretty good and then paul giamatti um is doing the voice of frankie and I can't picture any other voice coming out of Frankie now. So if there's going to be a live action movie, yeah. I'd still want them to do Those it. Those two guys there, yeah. I think it'd be awesome, you know. So, yes, yeah. yeah, so, I mean, like I said, uh, GMX treating you pretty good though mm -hmm. today. Like, yeah, this yeah. is this is a great show. It's like yeah. a little mini Dragon Con. It's pretty fun. Yeah, definitely. Well, thanks for taking Tommy. How do people find out more about you? How to purchase your stuff, your comics, okay. all that? Uh, they can go to darkhorse.com or uh, thegoon.com, and it's got you know, links to social media and digital comics and all that stuff on there. Okay. Well, thanks so much for talking to us, man. Oh, I learned thanks a lot. for having me. All Appreciate right. it. Take care. Thanks.